Welcome to the IFRS channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, prostate cancer and how we manage them in rural areas. Cancer of the prostate is one of the most uh, common cancers in men. In fact, it is the most common cancer in most of the places, except in some Western countries where skin cancers are a little more common than the prostate cancer. And as expected, the incidence is related to age and increases with age. While uh, people more than 65 have a much greater chance of having the cancer. What are the risk factors? One of the primary risk factors is a relative who has a similar problem. Then you have almost a threefold increase in having a risk of the cancer. And recently, the diet and obesity has been shown to be associated with the increased incidence. And so has uh, anything which causes uh, chronic inflammation. And of course, there are some unproven theories about uh, lowering the risk. And probably diet and uh, exercise would play a significant part in reducing the risk as uh, obesity and uh, diet do contribute to increased incidence. And some studies have shown the beneficial effect of metformin and even statins in reducing the risk of the cancers. As expected, uh, most of the presentation would be asymptomatic. And then they can present because of the increase in size of the prostate, which occurs due to the malignancy. And this will present as the low urinary tract symptoms. And then because it involves uh, nearby structures like the nerves, it can uh, cause other symptoms like uh, erectile dysfunction. Then of course, when it spreads, we have the symptoms which are related to the malignancies. What are these uh, local symptoms? The most common is because of the enlarging size and causing obstruction. We have discussed these symptoms in another lesson. But primarily these are hesitancy, poor stream, incomplete voiding, increased frequency and so on. But then the hematuria of blood in the urine is much more common with malignancies. Hematospermia, erectile dysfunction and uh, retrograde ejaculations occur because of the changes in the local area because of the malignancy. And uh, when the malignancy is advanced, you can have the cancer cachexia, then uh, bony tenderness because of the secondaries, lymphedema, deep vein thrombosis, lymph node enlargement. And because one third of the spinal cord now go to the bladder, they can also present as neurovesicle dysfunction. We have a prostate specific antigen, which is quite helpful in diagnosing. The normal level is uh, less than four nanograms. While four to 10 is the gray zone because there are other factors as you can see in the, the site, like urinary tract infection, exercise, even uh, any prostate stimulation can increase the PSA level. And greater than 10, the likelihood of malignancy is much higher. So if it is between four to 10, we can do another thing. You can check for the pre-PSA. If the pre-PSA is more than 25%, it's quite unlikely to be malignant. On the other hand, if it is less than 10%, the chances of malignancy are fairly high. Of course, uh, we have uh, newer modalities like uh, digital examination and ultrasound, MRI and uh, PET scan. The PET scan or other isotopes can be used to diagnose uh, spread of the disease. Of course, uh, the way you confirm it is by biopsy. And they can take a crooked biopsy or uh, we can take a biopsy when you offer treatment for prostate or doing prostatectomy. And here again, the histology, they have a Gleason method of scoring. and. They, 
any score above seven, even if the stage is clinical stage is uh, earlier, should be treated fairly aggressively. And the stage one tumors, uh, you don't even feel the tumor, it's diagnosed by screening methods. Stage two is uh, confined to the prostate, but with a low PSA. Stage three is a locally advanced disease and stage four has spread. And what are the treatment uh, modes available? And uh, this is one of the malignancy because it's a slow growing tumor. With the doubling time, which can start from 1.5 months to almost four years. Hence, a low grade malignancy incidentally diagnosed. You can even actively wait and see what happens. And in the West, they offer radical prostatectomy or radiation therapy. But one thing we need to realize is that most of these malignancies are sensitive to castration or androgen deprivation. And uh, if they are resistant to it, then the prognosis is bad. The treatment is, of course, uh, for the obstruction. The channel TURP differs from the classical TURP in that uh, you don't uh, fully resect the prostate. You just uh, create a channel for the patient to pass urine. And bilateral orchidectomy is the gold standard for androgen deprivation. Of course, there are many medical ways of doing castration, starting with LR, luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone agonists, antagonists, androgen receptor blockers, androgen synthesis inhibitors, and so on. Recently, we have a chemotherapy or targeted therapy or immunotherapy, therapy, but these are all uh, not uh, in the experimental stages and uh, not all that useful. But the good news is that uh, it has a very good uh, prognosis. If you look at the slide there, even those uh, patients who have uh, metastasis in the lungs, liver, bone, they still do have a fairly good uh, prognosis. And there's only one out of 36 patients who have malignancy die because of it, because they can die often due to the other conditions or even old age. And the relatives, uh, 10 years survival is 98 and 15 years several 96%, which is very good for a malignancy. And what do we do in rural areas? The treatment plan is fairly simple. You do a bilateral orchidectomy, which is an easy procedure. We have another video which shows that. And uh, if necessary, if there is any obstruction, like uh, following this, we're going to show you a video of uh, vaporization for channel TRP. And then uh, follow with the PSA measurements. And if it goes up, you can use uh, flutamide to treat. Now we're going to watch a video which will show how we do a channel uh, TURP in a patient who would come with uh, acute painful retention and also has a diagnosis of carcinoma of the prostate. This is a patient who has carcinoma of the prostate. He had a TRP done almost 10 years ago. This time he presented with the acute painful retention of urine. His PSA is more than 100. So we are going to do a, what we call a channel TRP and bilateral orchidectomy, which should suffice for most patients. So we start with the injecting the liberal amount of jelly. This is the bladder neck. We start first with the vaporizing the bladder neck. Even when we are doing a 
here we do what we call the channel TRT. Even otherwise, we need to first form a <coughs> channel for irrigation. The procedure that we are doing is called vaporization. It uses a very high voltage current and it makes the prostrate disappear in the same way. The figure is almost a day after that, so the volume is leading to the day to the day to the day. Laser cost effectively does the same thing, but then it is much more expensive and much lower than this. Another advantage of vaporizing is that you can either do it both ways. Both ways you can come in. Since it's malignancy, we're going to take two tips for biopsy. Then we can come in and vaporize.
the even in the middle. Then it's nicely open, so we are leaving it there. Earlier we couldn't even get into this area because it's locked. Okay. Tired? You'll get it on hand. Okay. Well, injecting it should always have a syringe up so that we don't want to put the air bubbles in there. And stop a little bit. Ideally, you should inject about uh, the size of the prostate that you have resected. So here we would have vaporized about 80 grams, so... But then the balloons are not sticky, so we will inject only that much. Absolutely clear, and all the air bubbles are removed. 